creator and ruler of all, we thank you for life. Thank you for this Shabbat day, which you have granted us to rest from our, our burdens, rest from our work, in order to be rejuvenated by you, your word, and the love and fellowship of each other. Um, yeah, we pray for the forgiveness of our sins, transgressions, and iniquities that we have committed before your face toward you, Father, and toward each other. May you forgive us. May we be clear in our words, reach you, and that they are not cast down. That you may hear our cries, Father, Yah, and that your face is toward us, that you may not only hear, but to respond. We thank you, Father, Yah, for all that you have done and all that you are doing in our lives. May you continue to take from the sin May your Ruach and may your steel for the nations from your children. That's right. Now. That they may see your, your will being done on earth. And you'll manifest it. So, yeah. May you continue those who are not home. Not for those who are in. Comfort those who are warning in this time, oh yeah. May you be the family of the real as they are burying their son today, oh yeah. May you come for the grievance. Oh yeah. Now we'll have the uh, ordinances read by OZF. I don't OZF. Take this or. Shabbat Shalom, Mishra. Our first order is set up from Samoth, commonly called Exodus chapter 19, starting at verses 1 through 8. <clears throat> and it reads In the third month, when the children of Israel were going forth out of the land of Mizraim, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the mount. And Moshe went up unto Elohim, and Yah called unto him out the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Yahweh, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Mitzrim, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and a set apart nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moshe came and called for the elders of the people, and called, excuse me, and laid before their faces all these words which Yah commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yah have spoken, we will do. And Moshe returned the words of the people unto Yah. Allah, Yah. Next ordinance will come from Waikha, commonly called Leviticus, chapter 26, starting at verses 40 through 46. Forty through 
Oh. Hold on. And it reads, if they shall confess the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humble, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with the cold. And also my covenant with yes, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember. And I will remember the land. The land also shall be left to them and shall endure her survival while she lieth desolate without them. And they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity, because even they despise my judgments, and because their soul abhor my statutes. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies. I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them, to destroy them utterly, and to break my covenant with them, for I am Yahuwah their mighty one. But I will for their sakes remember their, the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Mizraim, in the sight of the nations, that I might be their El. I am Yahuwah. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which Yah made between him and the children of Israel and Mount Sinai by the hand of Moshe. Allah, Yah. And our next ordinance to come from Yekezukel, commonly called Ezekiel, chapter 36. Verses 22 through 28. And it reads, Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith Adonai Yahuwah, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for mine set apart name's sake, which ye have profaned among the nations whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the nations, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the nations shall know that I am Yahuwah, saith Adonai Yahuwah, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the nations and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your heir. Hallelujah. Yeah. And servant, know thy maid servant, know thy cattle, know thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days, you who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all the men the midst. It's the only self today. Wherefore, okay. wherefore, y'all bless the Shabbat day and hold it. 
Honor thy father and thy mother, so thy days may be long upon the land which the who the Elohim giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor the man servant, nor the maid servant, nor the ox, nor the ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. One point, start to finish. Hallelujah. Okay. Shema Yisrael. Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echad. We are happy to add Yahuwah Elohega, be called Lebabka, Ube called Nefeska, Ube called Meodika. Hear and obey Yisrael, Yahuwah our El, Yahuwah is one. And you should love Yahuwah your Elohim with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, and with all of thy might. Hallelujah. Now we're getting to our Hallelujah portion. Uh, preceded by my Hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you deserve, you deserve it, you deserve it, you deserve it, you deserve it. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah. Okay. Anyone with a hallelujah? Anyone, anything they want to give praise to the creator for? Anything he has expressed to you to express to us or anyone you would like to express yourself. Now it's the time to do so. Hallelujah. 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 I want to give a praise to the most high Yah for a most of our day. Uh, I think this is the time I came in the truth. Come over at this time. That was two years ago. So, y'all yeah, would give praise to the most high. You don't need to be involved. You know? Wait and gradually, you know, I can just watch it and listen. So, you know, it's beautiful to see the growth uh, and the walk. Uh, but like I said before, there's a lot of things that I still have to learn. So I just want to give praise to the most high God, you know, for keeping me in this walk, you know, allowing me to grow, just having mercy upon me. Uh, so, that's my hallelujah. 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 Okay. Anyone else with the hallelujah? All right. Yes, sir. Get it, get it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, Giving an honor, glory, and stamp to the creator of heaven and earth. Um, praising the most high for everything. <laughs> yeah, I know it sounds very blunt, very broad, but he is the sustainer of everything that we that we fathom in our minds. Uh, anything that we need, that he is. So if we need a savior that he is, we need a comforter that he is. Anything that we can fathom, anything that we need in that moment in time of distress, he is that for us. So for him to be a strong tower, for him to be within his name, we have to give honor and glory and praise to the creator that is. So I want to give the most high praise for family, uh, discontinuous, love that he gives for family, the aspect of it, even, even from the foundation of the earth, it was laid. 
thanking the Most High for health, um, sending Tafila for the little ones that are sick in the house, uh, praying for speedy health and recovery for them. Uh, pray for my aunt, the real. There's no words I can really quantify that. So continuous Tafila for him and strengthening his house as well. And strengthening every house, every soul that is here giving honor and glory and esteem to the creator and lifting his name up above all names. That's my hallelujah. 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 Okay, just want to give a hallelujah to the, to the most high Yah, creator of all things, um, giver and sustainer of life, uh, first and foremost for life, for the ability to have your uh, faculties, have a sound mind, um, for consistency and uh, steadfastness. Um, we just came on three years for the for the remnant this past, well, on July 27th. So that was a barakah. Uh, just, there's so many people who have came into this walk and who have left. Uh, so many people who have decided to test the waters of the creator and then get out of them. Um, but the Most High has kept us. The Most High is uh, continuing, continuously teaching us, uh, chastising us, um, leading us into the way that we should go. So I just say Toda Arba for that. Uh, Toda Arba for, for my, my Isha um, and everything that, that she does to keep us on track, to keep me on track. Um, yeah, just for... Continue want to stay focused. Um, there's nothing that we can do without the focus on the goal, which is walking before the Most High. So I just say hello, y'all, for that. Um, hello, y'all, for the family that's around me. Uh, true family and blood family. But even though, you know, they are still important as well. Because we're supposed to be the example. We're supposed to be the light. So how can we do that if we keep them in the dark? Talking about you, Shah, that's what we'll be talking about sometime this week. I don't know when. But um, yeah, just consistency. So Todaya, Todaya. Uh, anyone else with the Hallelujah? You probably gonna have to unmute yourself. I got you next, Ima. Uh, uh, giving all praise, honor, and esteem to the Most High God uh, for another week that He's brought me through. I was sitting at the crib and I was thinking, I missed two Shabbat Sunday. So my apologies for that, but. When you've been around family for so long, when you go a week, it feels like a month or two, you know, and I actually felt that. Um, and also, I said yesterday, the most I allowed a, a, a brother from the past to, uh, I guess, come back in my life. And uh, I tried to say yesterday, he pretty much was telling me some of the things that I was going through, and I had to listen, you know. This is a brother I, I served in the military with, but you know, the father he's showing me uh, certain things bit by bit. And I just thank him for speaking still and, and me still being able to hear his voice. Sometimes I don't hear it always, but we're working on that. So, you know, giving all praise and honor and esteem to the most high for that. Thank you. Hey, hallelujah. Yeah. Uh Ima. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Shabbat Shalom. Just want to just say um, Todaya for, um, for all things, no matter what they look like, no matter what they feel like or what it seems like. When you, when you, when you are steadfast in him, he is always in control. I just want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you and Todaya for touching my body and healing me. And um, 
although, and I'll just say, although I just, I had COVID, I was, I knew of multiple people during that same week that I had COVID and they all had vaccines and all whatever. And I think I probably had the least amount of symptoms than anybody. Um, and I just want to say Toraya. And he is, he definitely is a, dis, dis, he, is, he distinguishes what he's doing with each of us individually. Although COVID may have hit me, it did not hit my husband. And he was in and out of here, moving back and forth. And everybody else would have said, well, wait a minute, I don't understand. How did you get it? And he didn't get it because he is who he is doing exactly what he needs to do in each and every one of us. And I just wanna say Toraya for all that he does in me to mature me, to continue to grow me and to, cause to continue to um, show his love towards me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Dang, Toraya for your healing, Ima. And um, glad, you, glad you're doing well. Hallelujah. Um, anyone else with the hallelujah? Okay. No, we, well, we had one, it just wasn't connected, but uh, uh, Oxford, uh, yeah, yeah, you never get it, that's fine. Okay. All right, okay, uh, well, um, if there are no more hallelujahs, then we're gonna go into praise and worship. Uh, a quote to Hila, if you can um, lead us in, in praise and worship. Oh, say you got to to get it. Yeah, it is excellent. Yeah, it is excellent. Yeah, it is excellent. And worthy of all praise. Yeah, it is excellent. Yah is excellent. Yah is excellent. And worthy of, and worthy of all praise. And oh, he by whom I live with all, with all the strength you give, I will. I will worship you all my days, all my days. Elohim, come on. Elohim, by whom I live with all, with all the strength you give, I will, I will worship you. So that. All my days, Yah is, Yah is excellent. Yah is excellent. Yah is, Yah is excellent. And worthy of, and worthy of all praise. One more time, Yah is, Yah is, Yah is excellent. Yah is excellent. Yah is. Yah is excellent. And worthy of. And worthy of all praise. Hallelujah. 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 You want to come? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know, oh, yeah, you are the source of my life. Oh, yeah, you are the source of my life. Oh, yeah, you are the source of my life. And there's nothing like you. Oh, yeah, come on. Oh, yeah, you are the source of my life. Oh, yeah, you are the source of my life. Oh, yeah, you are the source of my life. And there's none like you. 
But you are L. You are L. You are King. You are King. You are author and creator of everything. Great I am. Great I am. You're worthy of all esteem. You're in the valley by my side. You deliver from the fire, oh Lord. You are the source of my life. Oh yeah, you are. You are the source of my life. Oh yeah, you are. You are, you are the source of my life. And there's none, and, and there's, there's none like you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, come on. Oh yeah, you are the source of my life. Oh yeah, you are the source of my life. Oh yeah. You are the source of my life, and there's nothing like you. You are L. You are L. You are King. You are author and creator of everything. Great I am. You are the of all the skin. You are the valley by my side. You deliver from the fire, oh yeah. You are the source of my life, oh yeah. You are the source of my life, oh yeah. You are the source of my life, and there's none, and there's none like you. And there's none, and there's none like you. One more time, and there's none. And there's none like you. Hallelujah. 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 Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, we're going to get into the soil portion. Hopefully everybody's okay out here. Y'all ain't getting bit up. Okay. Uh, soil portion for this week is matok, which means tribes or staffs. Um, in the book of the Midbar, commonly called Numbers, chapter 30, starting at verse 2. The Midbar. Commonly called Numbers chapter 30, starting at verse 2. Now I just told him I need my book. You should understand. All right, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use my phone. Y'all ain't looking. Oh, uh, no, I'm, I'm on 73 with soda. I'm going uh, to cut this hot spot off. Oh, let me get this. Okay, I'm going to share it on my phone. What, the hot spot? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. That one, I share my screen. All right, okay. So we are in the book of not that I needed Numbers 30, chapter verse 2. All right, okay. Well, really one. And Moshe spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which Yahuwah have commanded. If a man vow a vow unto Yahuwah, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond. He shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. All right. So questions. Um, is this for? Huh? This is Numbers chapter 30. Oh, yeah. The Midbar probably called Numbers chapter 30. Um, so question. Um, uh, is this for every man? So, well, let me, well, hold that question. 
and we're gonna keep reading, and then we'll come back to is this every man. Also, however, and bind herself by bond, being in her father's house, her youth, and her father hear her vow, and her bond wherewith she have bound her. shall stand. But if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth, bound her soul shall stand, and Yah shall forgive her because her father disallowed her. And if she at all a husband when she vowed or uttered or ought out of her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, and her husband heard it and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it, then her vows shall stand. And her bonds, wherewith she bound her soul, shall stand. But if her husband disallowed her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which he vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, of none effect, and Yahuwah shall forgive her. But every vow of a widow, and of her that is divorced, wherewith they have bound their souls, shall stand against her. And if she vowed in her husband's house, or bound her soul by a bond with an oath, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her, and disallowed her not, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But her husband have made, have utterly made them void on the day he heard them. Then whatsoever proceedeth out of her lips concerning her vows, or concerning the bond of her soul, shall not stand. Her husband have made them void, and Yah shall forgive her. Every vow binding oath to afflict the soul of her husband may establish it, or her husband may make it void. But if her husband altogether hold his peace at her from day to day, then he establish all her vows or all her bonds which are upon her. He confirmed them because he heard them. But if he take any ways, make them void. But if he shall any ways, likely make them void, after that he have heard them, then he shall bear her iniquity. These are the statutes which Yah commanded Moshe between a man, between a mother and his daughter, being yet in her youth in her father's house. Hallelujah. Um, well, a couple questions. So I get in word and make a vow, and he shall do whatever you know, so on and forth. Um, is that for every man? For example, um. Let's say you have a son. So Yosef, Abimelech gets older. He's about 15, 16, and he makes a vow. Does it stand? You say, Lo, why not? Uh huh. Okay. So that's about 85%, right? So it's not. Just a husband, right? It's also it's it's the head of the household. So okay. So because he is not the head of his household, so Shashamar, if he make a vow, he's the head of his household. Oh, he make a vow, that's the head of his household. But somebody who was an adult, so like um Isaac, when he was still living with Abraham, he he couldn't have made a vow that would have stood if Abraham heard it and said no. Because you are not quote unquote Lord over your own house at that time. So a man who is over his own house, when he makes a vow, that stands. Or when he makes an oath or he promises to do something, that stands. And he has to fulfill it. Now as far as the uh um a woman, um I have a question for a woman and I have a question for for the uh the Akin and question for Akio. For for the brothers, um when you read this what do you see? What do you see um, as far as you, you are concerned when you read this? Oh, you got your, go ahead, go lucky. Oh, you probably got to cut yours on. I'm not sure if they heard. Uh, I was going to say the relationship between uh, the head of the house and the creator, uh, how important that is, and how uh, the man should be headed and in tune with the creator. 
you know what I'm saying, to, to be able to to know these things and, you know, when to prevent and when to allow certain things to happen. That's a great answer in terms of the man having to be in tune. So, so I, I wrote it down like, so do you see power or do you see responsibility? Well, I'm talking to anybody, but he's good. Because, uh, kind of ties into the lesson that we had uh, last night when we moved into the seat of the rule again. Actually, this talk, you know, he was talking to Ishmael. He was saying, you know, the most high I wanted me to sacrifice myself, I would do. And then the most high put me like that. So, one of the points that we brought out on that lesson, we have to watch what we say, you know. So, you know, if you say you want to do something for the most high, it might be you. Most high, but even for something else, we have to do it. You know, we judge by the words that we say. Okay. So you see responsibility by yourself? I see both. Power and responsibility. Mm -hmm. Because later on, as you read, <clears throat> real loosely in regards to, uh, you have to understand and be in tune to greater, uh, to be responsible enough to discern the vow that is being brought forth in your house. But Later on, we see if that power is abused and you just continuously avoid the vows that have been brought forth without using proper responsive, responsibility, then that iniquity is now buried upon yourself. Okay. So it's the balance between power and responsibility. You, you, you definitely, I really like the, the aspect of being in tune with the credit because uh, your daughter or your wife can make a vow that actually is beneficial for the household. So you have to be in tune to find, to, to, to know what is beneficial for the household? For for example, um, the uh, the woman the woman that wanted um, uh, Elia to stay with them whenever he came in town, like she put a she put a uh, obligation upon herself to take care of a man of Yah. Now the, the East could have been like, no, he not staying with us, and so on and so forth. But not only was that was that beneficial for them, but that also brought fruit, fruit forth for their household. So you have to know when, when it is told and when it is raw. So for the for the uh, for the nashim, um, do you see uh, do you see bondage or do you see a covering? That's what I put. Right. Yeah, a bondage or protection. You said protection. Okay. So why you say protection? I'm gonna so heat the phone. You, you gotta put your face on the phone. I'll try I'll turn off I the video. I say protection because um, sometimes we don't make sound decisions. And by having our covering there, he's able to um, speak up and stand. Well, I don't wanna say stand, stand up, but speak up and correct us if we was to make a foolish vow or a vow that he feels like we won't be able to uphold. Okay. Anybody else? Do you see bondage or do you see protection? You, you also should see the, uh, the, I'm not gonna say issue, but the, um, burden that is placed on women without a covering, right? It says that widowed women and um, women who are divorced, right? So you probably wouldn't be back in your father's house, nor would you have an east. So all of your vows stand as if, as if you were, because uh, you are pretty much the head of your household. So whatever decisions that you do make now are on you. which I think that, that's uh, the word for widow, widow means uh, forsaken. So the women who, who, who don't have a covering, they're seen as, as people without voices within Israel, in a sense. Um, for the brothers, right? So, I'm, 
and law, it says silence is acquiescence. So that means that if you are silent, when something is brought to your attention, then you agree with it. So how, um, how, how heavy is the responsibility for you to be able to respond quickly, but not out of emotion, but understanding what is told and what is wrong for your, for your household? Because you only have one day in order to establish it or to disannul it. You only have one day. I think it goes back to what we were just talking about being tuned from the most high. You know, you know, if you're tuned from the most high, you, that may determine uh, you can get an answer quicker than someone who's you know, not doing that much study, it's not praying, it's not fasting, it's not. Taking it up seriously. You know? All right. Um, so. So do we make vows to the creator today? Do any of us make vows to the creator? I said it depends what you ask. I'm asking y'all. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, a year ago, I was asking for a lot of things. Then as I go with you more study, I was like, I forget, I asked for so many things, so I forget so many things I forget. You know what I asked for, but I said I was going to do it. Mm. So that's something that I learned in the last year. So now I take it you know, a lot more seriously. You know, I ask for things. You know, I said, you know, so. so do you write down? Do you write down your vows so that you don't forget it? Uh, I don't. Yeah, I started to uh, write write some things down. I think it's like you know, I'm going to you know, fast. I'm Oh, what about, oh, I'm not sure what you mean by that, sis, as far as uh, marriage, but, okay. Oh, as in the vows that you that you make between each other in marriage. Okay, so you would normally, uh, scripturally, every time you see a vow is usually toward uh, the creator. So your vows are more than likely only toward the creator. Well, based on scripture, what we see is toward the creator, but you see promises and oaths being made to one another. So your vows are to the creator, which, yeah, and your uh, promises and oaths are to one another. Okay, all right, let's go to, uh, let's go to the next chapter. Okay. Go back to uh, screen share. But just remember that in regards to what, what we were just talking about as far as vows as we keep going. All right, it says, And Yahuwah spake unto Moshe, saying, Avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites. Afterward shall they be gathered, shall you be gathered unto your people. And Moshe spoke unto the people, saying, Arm yourself, arm some of yourselves unto the war. And let them go against the Midianites and avenge Yahuwah of Midian. Of every tribe, a thousand. Throughout all the tribes of Israel shall you send to the war. So there were delivered out of the thousands of Israel, a thousand of every tribe, 12,000 armed for war. And Moshe sent them to the war, a thousand of every tribe. Them and Pinchas, the son of Eleazar, the Kohen, to the war with the set-apart instruments and the trumpets to blow in his hand. And they warred against the Midianites as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And they slew all the males. And they slew the kings of Midian beside the rest of them that were slain, namely Evi, or Ewi, Rechem, and Zor, and Hor, and Rebah, five kings of Midian. Balaam also, the son of Beor, they slew with the sword. And the children of Israel took the Midian captives. And took the spoil of all their cattle and all the flocks and all their goods. And they burnt all the cities wherein they dwelt and all their goodly castles, which are for the spoil and all the planting of bees. And that is all. 
the Kohen, and unto the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the king of the plains of Moab, which are by Yardan, near and Moshe and Eleazar the Kohen, and all the Sarim of the congregation went forth to meet them out of the camp. And Moshe wrote for the officers of the hall, with the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, which came from the battle. And Moshe said unto them, Have you saved all the women alive? Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the council of Balaam to commit trespass against Yah in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of Yah. Now therefore, kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman that have no men by lying with them. So why do you kill all the young men? I would say for the same reason that uh, you know, I believe it's, it's the first of most. Uh, Pharaoh, he went to uh, kill the firstborn uh, son, the other son. Because he didn't want anyone to reign over him. So that's the same reason why they killed the son there. So, okay. Okay. If you kill all my fa you kill my father, my uncles, and my brothers, and my and my sisters more than likely when I you kill them. Okay, now you kill all the women who are on the man. Why do you do that? Just for the sake of those who give the women alive. So you have kept every female alive, but when he says kill all the women, he says the Isha, so kill every Isha who has known a man. So why do you kill every Isha who has known a man? Maybe because those that are married, those that have the East, are more likely to uh, hold the same values or whatever they talk to, whatever they have going on, versus someone who's single. Okay. They don't know the counsel of a man for those who you keep alive. So you're able to train them up and for them be, to be your servants or as we find out later, you can you know marry the uh, prisoners of war, okay? Okay, 17, so kill every, all the little ones, the male amongst the little ones and every woman that have known man by lying with them. But all the women children that have not known a man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. And do ye abide without the camp seven days Whosoever, um, uh, why do they got to stay outside the camp seven days? Unclean from what? Okay, dead bodies. Whosoever have killed any person and whosoever have touched any slain, purify both yourselves and your captives on the third day and on the seventh day. And purify all your raiment and all that is made of the skins and all work of goat's hair and all things made of wood. And Eleazar, the priest, said unto the men of war, which went to the battle, this is the ordinance of, Yah, of, of the law, which Yah commanded Moshe. Only the gold and the silver, the brass, the iron, the tin and the lead, everything that may abide through fire, ye shall make it go through the fire and make it, and it shall be clean. Nevertheless, it shall be purified with the water of separation and all that abideth not the fire, ye shall make go through the water. Ye shall wash your clothes on the seventh day and ye shall be clean, and afterward ye shall come into the camp. And Yahuwah spake unto Moshe, saying, Take the sum of the prey that was taken, both of man and of beast, you and Eleazar the priest, and the chief fathers of the congregation, and divide the prey into two parts between them that took the war upon them, who went out to battle and between all the congregation. And levy a tribute unto Yah of the men of war which went out to battle, one soul of five hundred, both of persons and of beeves, and of the donkeys and of the sheep. Take it of their half and give it unto Eleazar the Kohen for a heave offering of Yahuwah. And of the children of Israel's half, thou shalt take one portion of 50 of the persons, of the beeves, of the donkeys, of the flocks, and of all men of beasts, and give them unto the Lewiim, which keep of the charge of the tabernacle of Yah. And Moshe and Eleazar the Kohen did as Yah commanded Moshe, and the spoil, being the rest of the prey, which the man of war had caught was 600,000 and 70, 600,000 and 70,000, 75,000 sheep. And three score and 12,000 beeves. So 72, 
thousand beeves, seventy one thousand donkeys, thirty two persons, and all of women that had not known man but lying with them. And the half which was the portion of them that went out to war was a number three hundred thousand and seventy thirty seven thousand and five hundred sheep. And the most high tribute of the sheep was six hundred and six. And seventy-five, and the bees were thirty and six, thirty-six thousand, of which Yahuwah's tribute was seventy-two, and the donkeys were thirty thousand, thirty-five thousand. Hold on, thirty thousand and five hundred, of which Yahuwah's tribute was three score and one. I will just read it. Fifteen thousand, of which Yah's tribute was thirty and two persons, and Moshe gave the tribute, which was Yahuwah's heave offer, unto Eleazar the Kohen. As Yahuwah commanded Moshe, and of the children of Israel's half, which Moshe divided from the man that wore. Now the half that pertaineth unto the congregation was 300,000, 30,000, and 7,000, and 500 sheep, and 30 and 6,000 beeves, and 30,000 donkeys, and 500, and 16,000 persons. Even of the children of Israel's half, Moshe took one portion of 50, both of man and of beast, and gave them unto the Levites which kept the charge of the tabernacle of Yah as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And the officers, which were over thousands of the hosts of the captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, came near unto Moshe. And they said unto Moshe, thy servants have taken the sum of the men of war, which are under our charge, and their lack of not one man of us. We have therefore brought an oblation for Yahuwah, what every man have gotten of jewels of gold, chains and bracelets, rings and earrings, tablets, and make an atonement for our souls before Yah. And Moshe and Eleazar the Kohen took the gold of them, even all wrought jewels, and all the gold of the offering that they offered unto Yahuwah, of the captains of thousands, and of the captains of hundreds, was 16,750 shekels. For the man of war had taken spoil every man for himself. And Moshe and Eleazar the priests took the gold of the captains of thousands and of hundreds, and brought it into the tabernacle of the congregation for a memorial for the children of Israel before Yah. Hallelujah. Mm. So they already had to give some of the spoil, right? But then they decided to give even more. Um, based on what we read, we kind of understand why. why why do you think that that's important today? That this portion of them giving, understanding that they lost not one soul given to the creator. They didn't have to. So why did they? It's a, it's a respect, uh, a thing of respect and reverence to the creator for, uh, I guess just being thankful for what he's done and repaying. Right. So a reverence and respect, okay. So do we still hold that same, oh, go ahead, I'll keep, I see you, go ahead. And uh, I definitely uh, agree, also say, uh, the word that's there is also, uh, and it stems from the car. So when I look at that, it's like they have to beckon and look at what happened at Baal Pior and see how many bodies fell mm. 6,000 souls that day. Mm. And for not one person to fall this day, it's almost like you're beckoned to give honor and praise to the creator for, for him allowing you to. 26,000 souls that died out of so was taken during this time. Mm. So it almost decades you to give a little bit more just to kind of uh, add on to that. Okay. So then the question is do we still have that same mentality today? And if not, why? How is it that our, our forefathers who even if they were wicked and so on and so forth, they understood reverencing the creator, giving to the creator. But we today who are trying to come back into it, 
we don't understand that particular process. You say we're spoiled? It's like waking up every day and we're spoiled. We think that all of this is old to us. It's like when you come into the truth, everybody thinks it's a, you know, instead of it being a humbling experience, everyone comes into this truth with pride as if it was old to them because they found out the truth. So I think we, we keep that mindset instead of it being humbling towards us for the most high for waking us up and just giving us the opportunity to get back to where we were. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, well, I was gonna say, I think it involves, you know, faith too. Um, because I remember when I first came, in, before I came to church, I was gonna dedicate, you know, uh, Saturday, Sunday, so to, you know, going aside business or something mm -hmm. that's money. So just in case you know, have a job, I have to fix it all that because I can't get food on Saturday. I can't, I can't do that. So, I was like, well, what if I, you know, I don't have enough time to create money on Saturday? The most I was with the Bible myself, you know, I read the scripture, like, there's no way I can work on this day. So, you know, I had to use the faith, you know, to say, well, Pastor, what the Bible is, I don't have to work these days or to decide what it is. And then, you know, even on days that aren't surviving, uh, Saturdays, I can, uh, I still forgive certain things. I sacrifice some things for the time. Okay. Okay. So, do you get all right? So, based off of that, so, uh, so do you give of what the creator gives you back to him? Right? This is, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's time to so because one, uh, we do understand the church. We understand that so we get, you know, um, those situations. However, every so he required. So part of it is required, right? Mossad required of them, and then they gave on top of the requirement. So, what is wrong with our with our hearts or our mentalities to where? Because we don't, yeah, like we don't do the requirement or we don't just have a heart to give. I think the requirement is what creates the heart to give. That's the part that we're missing. If you're not doing the requirement, you know, like them coming back from war, if they never did the requirement, we don't know if they would have the heart to do more. You know what I'm saying? we're here now and we don't even do the requirements so yeah we're not going to have a desire to do more unless it's required of us it's like nowadays if you say hey we're going to do something give a donation to this then the donation is given and then they're like oh i can give more you know what i'm saying but i feel like because we don't have the requirement down pack in our mind we can't really branch out to give more from our hearts Yeah, that is that the thought isn't there. A requirement is needed before the uh, the heart's desire is there. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Anybody else? Well, I can't see hands. So, I have, I have uh, what? Picture in this LA. Uh, are you talking about uh, if you give to the poor, it's like lending to the creator? So what do you owe the creator? Is the creator's is the creator's uh I'll say it like that. Are the creator's services free?
So, uh, it's a special night, uh, Proverbs chapter 19, chapter 19, verse 17. He that has pity upon the poor is lended unto God, and that which he has given, he will be taken again. That's what's going to help me out a lot. Huh? What was that? You were about to say something? Uh, I would say both. Um, I was going to bring this up uh, in the previous chapter, um, but I think it's perfect timing now. Uh, going back to Genesis chapter 28, where Jacob made a vow. Mm. And that's that's pointing directly to the greater. But Jacob asked the most high court servant, that if you do this for me, protect my household, grant me a safe passage from to and fro, and I'll give you a tenth of what I have, a tithe of what I have. So I would say most high services are not free. Uh, there is a requirement of what is to be given, but that's where the will and heart comes into play, where if your heart beckons you to move to get more out of the banks for what the creator has done for you, then you give more. But yes, there is a requirement for the creator. Hmm. Hmm. I, I, I guess I'm, my thought process is, my only question is, why, why is it so hard for us today to understand that? Like, obviously, our forefathers understood it. They understood it. But for some reason, we don't. So, I mean, that's just something to think about. We ain't going to hearken on it, but just... We want so much from the creator, but we don't give him what, what he wants. Not just your uh, Saturday observance of Shabbat. There's more that he requires, which is why some would say the nation isn't moving. Let's, let's go back to the scriptures. Oh, wait. Hold on. Sorry. Yeah, you should be good. Okay. Um, I don't want to leave the subject too early because it's like that that's that happens way too often uh, within our group of people because we're quick to invest in everything else and expect the same type of service that the most high is supposed to provide. And it, it, it obviously doesn't happen. And yet we're also willing to give more to outside entities rather than just giving the requirements to the creator. So it just, when you really look at it, take a step back and truly look at it, it should prick your spirit to be like, dang, there has to be some type of change in yourself in order to get back on the right path. So uh, duels uh, said earlier in regards to walking, uh, to walk on that path, which would again, get you to realize that everything that is being done is being done through the creator for you. So yeah, it would beckon you to give the requirement and then some. Mm -hmm. uh, I like my phone. Uh -huh. I would say that um, just like coming back into this walk, there's a lot of things that we've had to throw away or sort through to find out what the, the truth is and what is not the truth. Um, the enemy has a way of sowing seeds into places to turn you off. So just like the church does what they do, it has turned off a lot of people. So they have counted it out as not a requirement 
So just like we're we're gathering things back that we should be doing in this walk, I think that's one thing that hasn't been gathered back because of you know how it's portrayed. So we don't take it as a requirement anymore. We just we're just living life and not realizing how much is really affecting us because of the little requirement that we have not taken back. It's just a hard issue. It's a hard issue. I said it's a heart issue. Yeah, it's just a heart issue. I understand it, but we'll get it hopefully eventually. Uh, Numbers chapter 32 said, now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of Yaseir and the land of Gilead, that behold, the place was a place for cattle. The children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moshe and to Eleazar the priest and unto the princes of the congregation saying, Ataroth and Debon and Yaseir and Nimrah and Keshvan and Eliele, Eliele and Shebam and Nebo and Baon. Even the country which Yahuwah smote before the congregation of Israel was a land of four cattle, and thy servants have cattle. Wherefore say they, if we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto your servants for possession, and bring us not over to And Moshe said unto the children of Gad, and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war, and shall ye sit here? And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the of the children of Israel from going over into the land which Yahuwah have given them. Thus did your fathers when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. For they went up unto the valley of Eshkol and saw the land. They discouraged the heart of the children of Israel that they should not go into the land which Yahuwah, Yahuwah's anger was kindled the same time. And swear he saying, surely none of the men, just want to say that says, uh, you know, but Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, because they have not saved Caleb, the son of Yefune, the Kezanite, and Yehoshua, the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed Yahuwah. And Yahuwah's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years into all the generations that had done evil in the sight of Yahuwah was consumed. And behold, ye are risen up in your father's steed, an increase of sinful men to augment yet the fierce anger toward of Yahuwah toward Yisrael. For if ye turn away after him, ye will yet again leave them in the wilderness and ye shall destroy this people. So they asked him a question about land and he just went on a whole tangent. Why? Asked about the land. Hmm. Okay, uh, a build up of anger in regards to what? <laughs> okay, Israel being Israel. <clears throat> yeah, it's yeah for, for for him for him is deja vu is Israel always trying to find a way out of doing what the Most High told him to do. By right? this generation, because right now they're like year thirty nine or some some something around there, and it's another generation, and y'all are trying to do the same thing. Y'all are trying to stay here instead of going over to the RD. Verse 15, for if ye turn away from after him, he will yet again leave them in the wilderness and ye shall destroy all this people. And they came near unto him and said, we will build sheepfolds here for our cattle and, our, and cities for our little ones. But we ourselves will go ready, armed before the children of Israel until we have brought them unto their place. And our little ones shall dwell in the fenced cities because of the inhabitants of the land. 
we will not return unto our houses until the children of Israel have inherited every man his inheritance. But we will not inherit with them on yonder side, yon, Yardan, or forward, because our inheritance is fallen to us on this side, Yardan, eastward. And Moshe said unto them, if you will do this thing, if you will go armed before Yah to war, and will go, all of you armed over Yardan before Yahuwah, until he have driven out his enemies before him, and the land be subdued before Yah, then afterward you shall return and be guiltless before Yah and before Yisrael, and this land shall be your possession before Yahuwah. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against Yahuwah, and be sure your sin will be found out, will find you out. Build you cities for your little ones and foes for your sheep, and do all that have proceeded out of thy mouth. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben spake unto Moshe, saying, Thy servants will do as my Lord commanded. So they're talking about Moshe being their Lord. So this is a vow that they are making before the creator, right? 26, our little ones, our wives, our flocks, and all of our cattle shall be there in the cities of Gilead. But thy servants will pass over every man armed for war before Yah to battle as my Lord saith. So concerning them, Moshe commanded Eleazar, the Kohen, and Yehoshua, the son of Nun, and the chief fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel. And Moshe said unto them, if the children of Gad and the children of Reuben will pass with you over Yadon, every man armed to battle before Yah, and the land shall be subdued before you, you shall give them the land of Gilead for possession. But if they will not pass with you armed, they shall have possessions among you in the land of Canaan. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben answered, saying, As Yahuwah have spoken unto thy servants, so we will do. We will pass over arm before Yah into the land of Canaan, that the possession of our inheritance on this side, Yadon, may be ours. And Moshe gave unto them, even to the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, and unto the half-tribe of Manasseh, the son of Yosef, the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites, the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, the land of the cities whereof in the coast, even the cities of the country round about. And the children of Gad built Debon and Atorah and Aroeh and Atroth, Shofan, Yaaseh, Yagbe'ah, Beth Nimrah, Beth Haran, fenced cities and foes of sheep. And the children of Reuben built Hashban and Eliale and Kiryath, uh, Kiryathing, Ta'in, and Nebo, and Baal Mion, their names being changed in Sheepma and gave other names unto the cities which they built. And the children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, went to Gilead and took it and dispossessed the Amorite here unto Machir, the son of Manasseh, and he dwelt therein. And Ya'ir, And how does it apply? What do y'all see and how does it apply? Y'all okay? Well, it gave you the example of what it looks like to vow a vow mm -hmm. and to follow through with that vow and how the Most High rewards it. Um, huh? But I guess my question is, I mean, I guess they saw what they saw. So that's why they want to stay on that side, but it was just like, they didn't want to see the promise line. They didn't want to see what that had to offer. They didn't think that that would have places for their livestock too. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I'm, well, I can't say that that crossed their mind, but it's like, okay, well, we just killed all these people. We just destroyed their cities. And it looks like it fits what we're trying to do. But, but Kay, I, I, I see what you're saying, which is part, uh, another reason why uh, Moshe was highly upset is like, this is not the promised land. But 
that's that's what they wanted to inherit. So okay, cool. Uh, anything else, y'all see? How about that? The most I will give you, oh, hold on to this plane crossover family socket. Jet. Two jets. How about that? The most I will, <clears throat> the most I has no problem giving you a portion, but not. But not at the expense of the collective. Like, you wanted this, okay, the most, I, the most I will give you what you want, but you have to make sure everybody else gets what they need. It's, it's never just about the individual. Even what we were talking about earlier, Uzi, about um, you know, the, the process and stuff like that, it's like some people are going to go and find out the process, and then you got to come back and give it to everybody else. It's not for you to go get it and then you remain over there and you never come back to the family. The most I never wants, he's, he's, he's constantly talking about the collective and not the individual. And, and to, uh, to add on to what Maury said, it's like somehow, some way we got to trust that. You know what I'm saying? Like if there's one person that's like we were talking about earlier, you know, in the process that you're doing, you're that person, you know? So for the others that we're not, uh, I guess we're, we're not necessarily entertaining the process as much as you are, we gotta trust the fact that you will get that information, see if it works, apply it, and then bring that back to us and say, hey, I've, I tried it this way, let me put you on, woo, woo, woo. Right. But we gotta, you know what I'm saying? We gotta trust each other and trust that. Thank you for the thought of that. Uh, and just to just to sprinkle some more thought in there, uh, even in the midst of all of that, you understand that the creator is the something at all. Uh, just like Moshe uh, conveyed to the Gadites and the Reubenites that whatever came out of your mouth, let the Most High also see it through as well. And if you fall short on that word, the Most High will be the vindicator of that. So just to kind of sprinkle that in. There's something else that we, that we have uh, gotten away from in this, in this time period, which is uh, team success over individual success. Right. That's why <clears throat> that's why a lot of us don't necessarily flourish to the full capacity that we could. Right. Yisrael is supposed to be the head and so on and so forth. Right. We know all the all the promises, but we're supposed to get there as a collective. So regardless of what the most high gives you, your thoughts should be, OK, so how do I make sure everybody else around me is on at least the same level? The most high takes you from there. He takes you from there. For example, when um um Dawid and his Dawid and his his crew got their wives taken, their children taken, so on and so forth, and 200 of the soldiers couldn't go over. And they brought back the spoil. Everybody was able to, everybody was able to eat from what only a few of them did. That's that's having a mind like the creator. The mind of the creator is I'm I'm creating the the earth and I'm making everything good for not only you. The mentality of Yisrael right now is just only for me. But none of our forefathers and, and righteous forefathers and foremothers thought like that. So then 
why do we consistently think like that, but then expect the creator to uh, increase us to the fullest potential? I remember a situation. So my professor, she had a test, but she had like a study guide for you know, some of the answers. She said, you can write as much information down from this uh, study guide, from this cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. But after, you know, class is over, you know, we're not going to see this cheat sheet anymore. So I noticed that the people that appeared to be uh, Hebrews, they were writing the first chapter of you know, the first section of the study guide. People that were appeared to be of other nations, so they said, you write yep. this page, and I'll write page two, you write page three, and we get together after class. And I said, how, how about I want to, you know, mm -hmm. how about you just do it like, what? I'm trying to hear this, I, I don't have time for that. So, you know, that was it. Yeah. Because you can get, the saying goes, you can go get somewhere faster by yourself, but you'll get further with other people. Like, other other nations and, and other groups of people have have figured that out. That if we on a, a 20 hour ride, right? If I'm the only driver, I probably don't have to make, you know, as many bathroom breaks. But if I drive four hours and somebody else drive four hours, then we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. It may not be as fast, but we're gonna get there. Together. And yes, Rael, we just this, this this particular portion should be a reflection of Israel to show that we're not there yet. A lot of times, um, a lot of times as well, when you're operating in that status of uh, like you're just doing things by yourself, uh, it comes with a lot of casualties uh, coming from like a military mindset. But I'm I'm thinking about it. I mean, just putting it in real life, a lot of people will fall by the wayside because of the because of the individual decisions that you make. Whereas if you do it in a collective manner, I mean, even even seeing in the last chapter, as you move in cohesion together, then all the souls will survive. But it's when you start operating on an individual level. And you start opposing, especially opposing the creator, that's when lives are truly at risk. That's when lives are truly lost, uh, based on the decisions that are made in those and that in those types of status. Okay. Because you're only doing what's best for you. So that's like a con, uh, a con. He only did what's best for him in his tent, right? And wound up getting 36 other people killed because I'm not really thinking about the collective and what happens when one person does something solely for their benefit. Okay. 36 people died because one man wanted to think for themselves. Horat wanted to think for himself. Like there's so many examples of the difference between a collective thought and an individual thought. And until we get out of the uh, individualism of this Western society, we will not flourish as the community that the creator, the family that the creator has told us to become. From our, our vows to him, we vow to him that we will keep Torah, right? A lot of the Torah is making sure that your brother is straight. whether that's Jubilee, whether that's when they fall on hard times, whatever it is, most of the Torah is about making sure that everybody is on even playing field. So how are we really keeping Torah if we don't have that type of thought process? If we're still trying to keep our desires alive, at the expense of the collective. Is it wrong 
to, I guess a personal question, but is it wrong to, I guess, have the mindset, to have the mindset of, like, how we were talking earlier, uh, to, like, go out, kind of be the, the hunter and the gatherer, and what you hunt and you gather, you bring back, but you don't really want nobody to come with you. Why you hunting and gather? Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying, though? So, so is it wrong to want to go out and hunt by yourself and then bring it back to the family? For the family, yeah. No, that's the understanding. So, if you're the best hunter right, mm-hmm. in the family, and you think that for, for your, so let's say you got a son, a soldier, I'm going to be uh, a liability. So you like, look, you just stay here, I'm gonna go get it like a bunch of That works for the collective. That works for the collective. As opposed to you just saying, all right, well, I'm gonna do it by myself and you don't have to find out how you can get it. Right? It's, it's still a collective model. Now we want to go he would he um he was up in the mouth of the Philistines. He would go out to the Philistines or the uh, Palatites, kill a bunch of them, then bring the spoils back. So it's the same, the same type of mentality. So you go get it and you're back. But it seems like we're the only people who don't understand it well we go through this cycle of yeah we we, we do go through a, a cycle of insanity by we go through hard times and it seems like we're the, we're the only ones in the hard time when in all actuality if everybody's not down at the same time but the thought is if you got zero and I got 10 and I give you five, then I just lost five instead of you gaining five. We look at we lost instead of what you gained. So then when I'm down and you, I'm at zero and you got 10, then I should expect for you to love me as I loved you, which is what the Torah say, stated in the first part. It's just, uh, I don't understand, but I understand it because that's where we at. We're, we're in a society to where I would, I'd rather, it's kind of like, you know, for example, right? <clears throat> Eliezer, talking about E, right? Eric, right? And Yosef, both of them hate on LeBron James, right? It's, it's crazy. I don't know why they do, but they do. But they hate on LeBron James, right? But LeBron James would risk, he would, he would rather not have the stats that he could have for the sake of winning. Right. I just want to throw that in there. But but for the sake of for the sake of getting rings, he he would he would team up with other people that would seemingly dim his light. Right. I was watching an interview with um uh Jay Jay Z yesterday, right? On on my way home, him and Kevin Hart. Um, and he was like, You can own a hundred percent of nothing. Or you could own 50% of something that actually brings forth fruit. Right. So he got the um um he got a champagne company, you know, um Ace of Spades or whatever. So he was like, I can either own hundred percent of this or I can sell 50% to one of the to one of the um leaders in the champagne industry. So of course that's what he did, and you know, so on and so forth. But we think like that. It's either I own hundred percent or I don't want to be involved. If I got to own 25, 25, 25, 25, that cuts down my profit. Now, understanding that you have gifts that I don't have, gifts that I don't have, gifts that I don't have to where the brand becomes better. Or I can just own 100% and I, I can continue to struggle. We struggle most of the time because we want all of it. We want all the credit. We want all the revenue. We want all the esteem. So we don't flourish. Meanwhile, you have seven to eight people, seven to eight different households and one household working together. 
I will lose some of my sanity for the sake of making sure that we get to where we need to together to where I'll have sanity on the back end. I lose some of the space right now for that. I lose the revenue so that the business can expand. We don't have that mentality. And that's what Moshe was getting upset about because he, he was thinking that y'all are, excuse my, well, I ain't going to say it, but no, y'all some niggas. Right when the gate, y'all going to do exactly what the other people did. Y'all going to think about yourself and y'all going to leave y'all brothers and sisters out back and turn their back. So now we got to do 40 years again. That's the mentality that we in right now to where we're going to be on this side of the Jordan. Y'all go over there and when y'all get Charles, then we'll, then we'll come back together. But we got ours now. And that's not the vibe. Some just spit on me. But um <laughs> nah, not on my forehead. Okay. That was crazy. But okay, um, but that's the point. Does, does anybody have any comments or questions or, or concerns? Especially for those on Zoom, because y'all haven't said too much anything. This is supposed to be a, a, a double portion to pretty much finish out the book of numbers. Uh, that's a lot of reading. Huh? Yeah. So everybody online don't have no questions or comments or concerns. Okay. When it is um, two chapters in the next portion that I wanted to read so we can get through numbers. So let's go back into the book. Uh, so 33 um, numbers is about the uh, journey of Israel as they were wandering through the wilderness for the 40 years. 34 is talking about when you come into the land of Canaan, that these are the, this is the um, uh, borders of the land and what you would need to uh, split amongst those who are going to get an inheritance. So then we go to 35, right? So uh, but Midbar 35. And it reads, And Yahuwah spake unto Moshe in the plains of Moab by Yardan near Jericho, saying, Command the children of Israel that they give unto the Lewi'in of the inheritance of their possession cities to dwell in. And ye shall give also unto the Levites suburbs for the cities round about them. And the cities shall they have to dwell in, and the suburbs of them shall be for their cattle and for their goods and for all their beasts. And the suburbs of the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites, shall reach from wall of the city and outward a thousand cubits round about. Ye shall measure from without the city on the east side, 2,000 cubits, on the south side, 2,000 cubits, on the west side, 2,000 cubits, on the north side, 2,000 cubits, and the city shall be in the midst. This shall be to them the suburbs of the city. And among the cities which you shall give unto the Levites, there shall be six cities for refuge, which ye shall appoint for the manslayer, that ye may flee there. And to them shall ye add 42 cities. So the Levites all together have 48 cities all together. So all this. according to his inheritance which he inherited so every city every tribe has a city of levites in it that's what they that's what they will go for shabbat more than likely that's where they will go learn of the torah in order to gather that's also where you would go for your sacrifices speak unto the children of israel and say unto them when ye come over your dawn into the land of canaan then ye shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you that the slayer may flee thither which killeth any person that unawares or who kills somebody accidentally. And they shall be unto you cities for refuge Ooh. from the avenger that the manslayer die not until he stand before the congregation in judgment. And of these cities which ye shall give, 
Six cities ye shall have for refuge. You shall give three cities on this side of the Yardon, and three cities shall ye give in the land of Canaan, which shall be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be a refuge, both for the children of Israel and for the stranger and for the sojourner among them, that everyone that can kill any person, person unaware may flee there. For if he smite him with an instrument of iron so that he die, he is a murderer. That murderer shall surely be put to death. If he smite him with throwing a stone, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Or if he smite him with the hand weapon of wood, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. So how do you, how would you know that that person is a murderer? Somebody, somebody dies, somebody's with him, he goes to the city of refuge. How would you know that that man is a murderer? Okay, okay. Okay, so two to three witnesses stating what? Okay, so two to three witnesses. Well, how can you tell somebody's intention? Well, say for example, you know, it says they're on the land and someone's in a tent. So, you know, in the middle of the night, that is a gas. Someone sees that, but let's say someone, you know, we have some type of tool, a tree down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yo, sir. I'm gonna try to keep it 2022. If somebody commits an accident to death, you bring that up. You yourself bring it up because you're seeking refuge. If there's a murder, and a lot of times that individual tries to conceal that mm -hmm. rather than trying to bring it up and that's where your witnesses will come into play but your witnesses will also be the ones to convey if they see it uh the truth behind the words of the person that is bringing forth bringing forth whether it be accidental or not and or if the person did it attention okay so i said that before the most high tells you what how but let's keep reading y'all are correct though keep reading it said okay. No, the, uh, the revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer. Of him, he shall slay him. But if he thrusts him out of him of hatred, or hurl, so hatred is sana, meaning hating hatred, or hurl at him by lying in wait that he die. So lying in wait is an ambush. That's how you know if somebody somebody's lying in wait. That means it's premeditated. So if it's premeditated, which you would know by conversations that they had beforehand, how was their relationship beforehand? That's where the witnesses come in. 21, or an enmity, smite him with his hand that he may die, and he smote him, shall, he that smote him shall surely be put to death. For he is a murderer. The revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him. But if he thrusts him suddenly without enmity, or have cast upon him anything without lying of weight, or with any stone wherewith a man may die, seeing him not and cast him that he die and was not his enemy, neither sought his harm, then the congregation shall judge. Yeah. Give me a second, Mr. Okay. Um, can somebody keep, 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 keep that. Verse 21, or in enmity smite him with his hand that he die. He that smote him shall surely be put to death for he is a murderer. The revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him. But if he thrusts him suddenly without enmity or have cast upon him anything without laying of weight or with any stone wherewith a man may die, seeing him not and cast it upon him that he died and was not his enemy, neither sought his harm. Then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. And the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the Revenger of blood, and the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge, 
whither, whither he was fled, and he shall abide in it unto the death of the high priest, which was anointed with the set apart oil. But if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge, whither he was fled, and the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge, and the revenger of blood kill the slayer, he shall not be guilty of blood, but he shall have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return into the land of his possession. So these things shall be for a statute of judgment unto you throughout your, throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Whoso killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witness. But one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. Moreover, ye shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer, which is guilty of death, but he shall be surely put to death. And ye shall take no satisfaction for him that is fled to the city of his refuge, that he should come again to dwell in the land and to the death of the priest. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are for blood, it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein Amen. I dwell. For I, Yahweh, dwell among the children of Israel. Okay, hallelujah. So, everybody, so um, a couple of things, right? So one, um, the uh, avenger of blood, who is that? Well, I can't say you're wrong, but yes, but there's more to that. Who is the who is the uh, avenger or revenger? Is really the all which means to to redeem, to act as a kinsman redeemer, to avenge, to revenge. So who is that? Kins and whoever dies. I would say. Well, I'd say it could be. Yes. Anybody. It could be a multiple. For example, if someone actually child. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so the um, avenger of blood is somebody who is kin to them. More than likely, it's going to be um, somebody who's the closest to them, right? So it's not going to be like, you know, your third or fourth cousin. It's more than likely going to be um, a father or uh, a brother or an uncle or a cousin, right? It's more than likely also not going to be a female. So it's going to be a male who's going out and avenging blood. Um, so... The person who is who, who accidentally killed somebody has to go where? All right, so so to the city of refuge, and can they leave like for the for the feast days? They can't go to Sukkot. The Most I said all men have to go to Sukkot. Oh, so they can't go to Sukkot. It said um. Um, read verse 26, okay, and 27. But if the slayer shall at any time come from the border of the city of his refuge, whether he was fled, uh huh, and drew up the blood, I out the borders of the city of his refuge. Keep on, and the vigor of below the slayer. He shall not be guilty of blood. Uh huh. And reverse twenty eight. Why? But after the death of the high priest, so go ahead, but go ahead. What's your question? What if somebody tries to kill the high priest? No, nobody would try to kill the high. You wouldn't try to kill the high priest, so you can kill somebody else. Is it? You and probably a whole family, but, any, but you can't go anywhere. If I catch you outside the city for at any time, if you got to use a bathroom and you step outside in the woods, I can catch you. Yeah, it's a wrap. Let's say the uh, the slayer he just comes up to the fence and changes the whole 
Yeah, cause I'm gonna try to catch you. But so if the high priest, let's say the high priest, he just got he just got anointed. He like 25. Let's say the high priest is like 25. So do you think that do you think that the um uh, avenger of blood will be waiting until a 25 year old dies in order for him to? Well, he will be hunting you for the length of time of that high priest's life. Mm. Do you get a reward for what? No, I said, <laughs> no, you don't get a reward. I said, do you think that, okay, so let's say the high priest, Shabbat Shalom, Iman, Shabbat Shalom, Mishra. So let's say that the, um, the Kohen Hagador, right? So the high priest, he just got anointed. 30 years old, because you're going to have to be 30. So 30 years old high priest, and somebody, somebody kills somebody on accident and they, and they flee. Can, do you think that the um, Avenger of Blood would be waiting for the lifespan of that high priest? Like he will be seeking the life of the manslayer for, the, for that entire time period. So let's say that the high priest lived 50 more years. Do you think that the Avenger of Blood will be waiting for him for 50 years or trying to kill him for 50 years? Okay. Yeah. So do you think that he's going to be waiting around around the bushes for 50 years, Ima? <laughs> you say my check? <laughs> Y'all are violent. See, that's why the, the Avenger of Blood can't be, can't be a, 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 a cop. Go ahead. I think about it. Wait. Let's say he's outside the camp ten years after he murdered somebody. Uh huh. And he's like, "Man, such and such." Oh yeah. But you see the movies. They can wait like, Do something to his mental. It'll trigger his mind again. Okay. Go ahead, Aki. So, so the, this is not. This is a close relation, not the same thing. It makes me think about a. Uh, Esau and Yaakov, and in his heart, I'm sorry. That was a good point. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it makes me think because like he harbored well in the understanding. We see that he, for whatever time frame it was, he harbored hatred enough to where he wanted to kill his brother until I would say a certain time elapsed until that that desire for that bloodshed dissipated until he met his brother in crossing paths and they had a close embrace rather than one brother going after the neck of the other basically you see what i'm saying well it said that he was esau was coming with esau was coming with an army i know and there's there's other books that's yeah I, so and I yeah don't bring that up yeah right no i mean we don't have to go to the other book we, we just know that esau according to torah Esau was coming with an army to go see his brother. Now, 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 either you can interpret that as he was coming with an entourage in order to protect his brother. <laughs> or he was coming to go get his brother. Like, I heard you back. Welcome back, party. Um, but Kay, but no. So the reason, the reason that um is for the length of the high priest's life is for that feeling to, to go away. Right at at the beginning, if, if if something were to happen, right, nobody here, but somebody killed somebody on accident. For the first few, maybe decade, decade, hopefully two decades, you probably still gonna feel something. Now, if the high priest lived fifty years in fifty years, you probably moved on and you you probably died. So the 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 whole point is to protect the innocent. The point of the city of refuge is to protect the innocent who it was an accident, so on and so forth. But we in our emotions, the most high, that's why he's so he's great.
Um, Leviticus 19. Oh, they can't hear you. Yeah, I, I told you that guy stopped whispering. Yeah, so this is uh, Leviticus chapter 19, verse uh, 17 and 18. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt not anywise rebuke thy neighbor. Thou shalt not sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear a grudge against any of the children of thy people. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as I shall. Okay, so since you brought that out, right, I got a question. Do you think that that precept applies to this? Well, based on the fact that that anger is not supposed to last, you know, 10, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, you know, that should be, should be gone. So thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart, thou shalt not avenge. So that... <laughs> It said, thou shalt not avenge, but the creator is telling you that there's going to be an avenger. Hmm. Uh huh. No, I'm sure they can't hear you on Zoom. So go ahead. The camera ain't on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The camera ain't on. Go ahead. As far as the, um, you know, the Avenger of Blood, I think it's a whole different set of circumstances. Like, I don't like you, okay? But I can't harbor that in my heart mm -hmm. because it's against the law. As opposed to we're out in the forest and we're chopping cheese, my axe handle fell off, it hit you and you accidentally died. Okay, your family is going to avenge me, avenge you for that death, not because I have harbored any hatred in my heart okay. or because they're harboring any hatred in their heart is because that was something that was a different circumstance. Absolutely. So I, that's the difference between the two. I understand what you're saying. But however, when it comes to that, that's something like that. Oh, I don't like you. Oh, I'm going to get you <laughs> and stuff like that. Now, and, you know, you can't do that. You can't hate your brother and sister than they are. <laughs> Which would, which would, which would then, um, you doing that would cancel out um, you even being able to go to a city of refuge. Right. Because now you would have been lying in wait for that person anyway. So now they would have taken you out the city and you have been, you would have been killed. Anyway. Yeah. Because you had that in your heart. That, that's, that's why the different pre, the precepts can't just be. And this is not to you. This is just in general. The precepts can't be joined together just because one says this and another says that because you have to look at context. So the context of one is somebody died and it's time to mount up. The context of the other is you don't like me because jealousy, envy, same thing you said, jealousy, envy, everything that will make you lie and wait for somebody. So now I got another question. So um, do we have... Uh, Avengers of Blood now. What? So somebody say, yeah, Eva, are you shaking your face? No. Um, why you say no first? Because. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, because it would be a lot of people that actually, I mean, there would be less killings of us killing each other. Okay. Put it that way, because we know that there was consequences. We can kill each other all day long. The people of the land don't care, only because it's us. You know, mm -hmm. why? I mean, I saw this in the movie just recently. It's like, oh, okay, so two black people, yeah, one killed the other, so what? Is he going to get? And then we're gonna let them know. Mm. You know, so that lets you know their attitude. They let you know their attitude. Okay, we gotta remember, even though we might be comfortable, we might be complacent, this is not our land. Okay. So certain things, certain things, you know, like when it comes to the holy days, we memorialize them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a different thing. 
so that when you do get into the land that, that is ours, we know exactly what it is that we need to do. Because you can't do everything that you that is written, even though this is a living Torah. Okay. I I understand. I I understand. I have a different thought. Um, but uh, ladies, what's that thought? Oh, I'm I'm a, I'm a, well. They're gonna express it, and I'm just gonna expound on it because I already know where they're coming from. But um, why'd you say yes? So, so she said said people do it every day. You, you gonna expound on that or no? Well. Yeah. This is why we have people in jail. This is why we have gangs. This is why we have all that we have because there's always a vendor. There's always um, mistakes happening. There's always um, people lying in wait. Even though we don't have a system in place, it doesn't take away from what is still happening. Yeah, but the 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 system that Ema is speaking of, can't we we don't have that, right? We don't have a, I mean, like, you know, when you play how to go see, you got base, don't touch me. We don't have a base. So there, there's no base. However, we do have people that are hunting. For example, like you see it all the time. Well, for those who seen Boys in the Hood, right? When um, Ricky got killed. So like, oh boy, was next day, he was ready. And they were going to rock. Those are, those are uh, perverted Avengers of blood. So in a, and I get what you're saying, which, which is why you said no. But then on the other hand, you think about in the hood or in, in any neighborhood, well, even, even not to the ascent of killing. Oh, you beat up my brother. So now me and my boys are going to jump. So then now you and your boys will come over. So it's, there's always a tit for tat, which is why it's not righteous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we just don't have the system, but the mindset is the same. Okay. So do we have the mindset of being um, an avenger of blood? Yes. Do we have the righteous understanding of it? No. Because in our captivity, it's still, I'm still going to protect my family, regardless of whether it was an accident or not, which is why we still have brothers in jail who, you know, were, who were upset and in their emotions, they did something based on somebody doing something to their family. Which, as you said, the system doesn't care whether whether it's in Torah or not or something like that, they know, but they don't care. They don't care. It's okay. Right. We are in uh, Bemidbar. Um, that was just 35, so we are in uh, 36, mom. Uh, okay. Okay. Bemidbar 36. Uh, and the chief families of the children of Gilead, the son of Makeh, the son of Manasseh, of the families of the sons of Yosef, came near and spake before Moshe and before the princes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel. And they said, Yah commanded my Lord to give all, to give the land for an inheritance, slightly, by lot to the children of Israel. And my Lord was commanded by Yah to give the inheritance of Zeholophite, our, our brother, unto his daughters. And if they be married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, then shall their, their inheritance be taken from the inheritance of our fathers and shall be put to the, shall be put to the inheritance of the tribe wherever unto they are received. So shall it be taken from the lot of our inheritance. And where the jubilee of the children of Israel shall be, then shall their inheritance be put unto the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. So shall their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of the fathers. And Moshe commanded the children of Israel according to the word of Yah, saying, The tribe of the sons of Joseph have said well, which Yah do concerning the daughters of Zeholophah, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel removed from tribe to tribe for every one of the children.
Israel shall keep himself of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possesseth an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another, but every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. Even as Yah commanded Moshe, so did the daughters of Zeholophag. For Malah, Zir, uh, Tirzah, and Hoglah, Milcah, and Noah, the daughters of Zeholophag, were married unto the father's brother's sons. And they married unto the families of the sons of Nashe, the son of Yosef. And the inheritance remained in the tribe of the family of their father. These are the commandments and judgments which Yah commanded by the hand of Moshe. I'm just asking. I'm just. I'm just asking because you know I. I hear this. So. So if you are if you are Judah, you can't marry somebody in Rayu. So, so mom, somebody, somebody, tell me what this means, mom. Uh huh. Okay. 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 So this is not about because you hear this a lot, especially with um, some of our brothers and kids that you have to marry within your tribe and your tribe only. This is only about inheritance. This is solely about inheritance. And it's only about the women have Menashe. You can marry somebody from Naphtali because Menashe is going to keep the land because it goes from son to son. But a woman, when you are married into a family, you have now, in a sense, you have now changed tribes. If you were Menashe and you marry Yehuda, well, now you are part of Yehuda's bloodline. So now whatever you had there, that has to stay there in order for that to continue to be in lines, right? It says, you cannot remove the borders of the fathers. I believe that's in Mishle or Proverbs. So you cannot, you cannot mess with the borders. You cannot enlarge it. You cannot um, diminish from it. So that. Okay. So that's that's what that portion is about. All right. So those that's pretty much all. Does anybody have any questions in regards to anything we said today? Anything we spoke on today, whether the vows, um, Vows to given the inheritance, uh, the manslayer, woman, well, manslayer, the avenger of blood. Are there any questions in regards to that? All right. You skip what part? <laughs> Little bar. Okay. Oh, so, so Eva, I'm uh, I'm gonna ask you. Ask you and uh, Smiley up there. Um, do you still make vows to the creator? Or do you make vows to the creator?
Cancel Smiley's vow. Okay, <laughs> I know. That's why I asked. So, so the Ima, um, um, is she, um, um, is she a widow? No, I'm, I'm asking, is she a widow? And, um, is she divorced? Okay, all right. So, so, um, according to Torah, right, only, only a woman who's widow or divorced. They vows, whatever they say out they mouth can stand. So then what about, because I'm trying to bring it to 2020, right? And since you here, I can mess with you. Um, <laughs> so based on um, Smiley living with you and being under your household and there not being a, um, a each of the household, but you're still the head of the household, would, wouldn't you still be able to annul her vow? So for single mothers? You said what? Mm -hmm. And if it was a situation where the mom was the only one left, because even now, I'll give you a prime example. But this is another example. Okay. When uh, Jacob had went first to uh, stay with his people, right? Now, it says that the father. It didn't say what he was. It just said that um, Laban and the mother, mm -hmm. as a unit, spoke on what could happen to you. Okay. I don't have any sons that are living with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's just me. I don't see him giving that power to me because it wasn't written that the power was given to me. It uh, said specifically to the power of the Yeah, okay, to, to the to, to the east or to the to uh, well to the Abba and then to the east. But okay, so now that's in a and this is why I, I like having because that's in a perfect society.
Yeah, but we're talking about her daughter. That's why I'm asking about her daughter. Well, that's what we're asking. But you, you should probably speak up so everybody can hear you. But but that's what we're asking. So so um um you are a widow though, right, Mom? Um, you are a widow though, right? Okay, okay. So K Kyle was asking, well, wouldn't that kind of transfer the power over to you? Or would it have went to your uh your sons, but they're not in your house? That's what I'm saying. I don't know what kind of I'm not a widow person. Okay, but you're not in your father's house. I've known that, but still, I'm not <laughs> I, okay, but 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 she's not in her father's house. And the Torah said you have to be you, something's wrong with you too, but you have to be in the household of, of the father, right? This, this is why I wanted to for us to talk because in 2022, there's a lot more Torah is not you don't see the Torah, Torah, uh Torah-based households like that. You have a lot of single mothers. And so it's like, okay, so now if I have a daughter, I, I, I'm about to come see. So now it's like, okay, well, if I got a daughter, for example, Tahila, right? That means that Kylie can say something and Tahila can't say anything about her vow. Uh -huh. You have cast that force. You are a certain age. Who? At that time, an adult. Okay. 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 It wouldn't be the age of war, but I get what you're saying. So then, if you if, if he heard it say that I'm not going to X, Y, and Z for the next three years, you can't say to him, "Well, I." Can't say, well, I, you can't, you can't, you can't make that. Okay. What you can say, I don't think that would be the best vow for you to make. And give her the reason why. So I'm gonna go to Yosef. I got a question based on what you were saying. Go, go, go ahead, Yosef. Go ahead, Yosef. Uh, uh, it really makes we think about those scenarios that do come up in Torah that like, like the five daughters, for example, right? Before that, that scenario wasn't in a time frame now where a lot of scenarios that are taking place in our lives aren't necessarily in Torah. So we have to petition the creator to seek guidance and wisdom in that. And I'm just posing a thought, right? So hypothetically speaking, you have a lot of households that are out here that uh, I'll use you, for example, because it was brought up and I hate to pick on you. <laughs> so you're not within your father's house right now at this moment, right? But your Abba is still living, still breathing within this world, correct? So I say that in the aspect of, is he still not your covering? And I'm asking that aspect because I understand from a Hebrew perspective, you're talking about what's specifically in the household. It has to be in... Age 2022, where that doesn't necessarily exist. Mm -hmm. So, does the covering of the father still not happen because they're not within the house? It, see, this this is where it kind of goes to to what Ema was saying, but also to what to what you're saying, right? So, the point the and I'm posing a question. No, I got you. In order for you to be covered, right? Like my Isha is covered by me because she's with me. Yo, physically there. Okay, so in order for you to be in the household of another, right? Just because she has the Abba, right? Because all of us have Abba, but the Abba is not is not in the position of covering her. Ima is. So what is be, is being able to hear it? Yeah, if, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, seeing, observing, being able to be there, be present, knowing. You know what I mean? That's different than outside of a household. And then if she made a vow, 
the so album can't he hear, hear it. it. And if he did hear it, let's say he's out maybe on the phone, he did hear it. How does he know if that vowel will be beneficial to that household because he's not in there? What does it benefit? Oh. Well, say that again, Mom. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, which would go back to my point of she's not in his household, even though the Abba's living. The Abba is not. The Abba is not in a position in order to um. It's off. Oh, okay. Okay. See, this 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 is where the law of the land is. So, um, he's not in. He's not in uh, a proper status in order to rule. You're not under his jurisdiction. You're under Iman's jurisdiction. So then that would mean that if you are under or subject to somebody else's jurisdiction, they have the ability to rule over that. Which is why, which is why if it's with the father, right? If it's with the father, then you are under your father's jurisdiction. You are in his house. It's like his courtroom, right? Another judge can't come can't come into a courtroom and say, no, I don't agree with that judgment. You should do this because that's not the judge's jurisdiction. Only so she can't, I can't, I can't annul her, her vow. If you say it can is that's your jurisdiction. That's not my jurisdiction. So in, in 2022, based off of what you just said, like we have to now write, I don't want to say write laws, but we have to write amendments to the laws based on our situation, right? For example, um, 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 Ezekiel, right? When the Most High said, when he told Ezekiel that if you pray, right, or or um, when a wicked man turns from his wicked ways, so on and so forth, right? Ezekiel 18, that was not there prior to us going into Babylonian captivity. So the Most High always makes um, amendments or well, amendments for 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 lack of a better term, he always makes amendments based on the situation that we're in. So right now we're in the situation where there there are single parent households. So if your child is under your household as your jurisdiction, now you have the ability and the responsibility to say K or low to the vow that they make. Not your. I don't want to, not the father who, who you never met before, not talking about that situation, but your father that you never met before, how can he have authority? That's not, that's not what the creator was setting up. So that was a good bit, Josh. But um, okay, that's, that's. It makes me think, I, I want to, I don't want to stay too long on that, but. Go ahead, Iman. What is the conclusion to this? What you just said? Oh, the conclusion is based on jurisdiction. It's based on jurisdiction. Yeah, it's, it's based on jurisdiction. If they are, if it's a mother, whoever is the head of the household, right? That's the one who can annul or uh, support a vow. Whether it's made by a young man who's a young man or a young woman. Torah just is specifying women because that's based on the culture at that particular time. What you said, what? It was only based on the culture at that particular time. Go, go ahead, yourself. No, it makes me think about like a lot of the houses that was already mentioned that, you know, they, they, haven't, they haven't divorced, but yet, the uh, the husband is not there, so it's it's, it's not a woman that's kind of caught in this conundrum of. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. I go ahead. I was gonna say not a not a woman is caught in this conundrum of Tahisha's still there, still kicking, still going on, but there is technically covering just for the simple fact that he's not there. So you're not a widow, but does your vow or does the words that come out of your mouth? So it's just kind of like that. It's, it's, it's just a, a very complex situation that doesn't need to be that complex. If she was, 
If she was living by herself, then every word that she uttered would have to would have to stand because she would be the head of her own household. And the, what what clicked to me was Ruth. Ruth was Ruth was a widow, right? But she placed herself back under the jurisdiction of her mother in law, which is why her mother in law was kind of letting her know what to do. So I guess we kind of do have a, it's, she don't make no vows, but we kind of do have a situation where. Yeah, but um, um, Naomi, I think, yeah, um, Naomi couldn't have said Cain or Lowe to Ruth saying that because she was a widow. But by her saying that, she said she she pretty much gave her authority back to her mother-in-law. Yeah, yeah, it, it was a vow. It's just I'm saying that her mother-in-law at her mother-in-law at that time couldn't have said anything. You got you just clear your throat. You got a question? Oh. I was thinking about saying I was thinking about. Like, like, uh, we're talking, you know, the situation with two women both of them actually you know, the child said, you know, this is my child, this is my child, so what well, divide the child in half, boys, no, no. Mm -hmm. Just give it to you. Mm -hmm. Except the woman said, don't slay the child. Yeah. From my understanding, that's not written in Torah. But we use wisdom in that situation. You know, I don't think that situation was written in Torah. What's not written in Torah? Yeah. I don't think. Uh, no, I, I, like that, you know, oh. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no. yeah, that's 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 based off of wisdom, and that's just that's a court case. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a court case. So judges have you have you have what is written right is the baseline, but then um, I believe in the book. Deuteronomy it says that um, you are not to go to the left or to the right of what the judge gives as a judgment, which means that it's not always according to what you see in Torah. Okay. Um, are there any other questions or comments based on that? And what else we talked about? We talked about that. We talked about land. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. All right. Well, um, that's pretty much all I got today as far as the tour portions. Um, let's see. Yeah. So, hallelujah. Um, so September seventeenth. Um, that's the event here. Uh, with uh uh Imako Kavia, that event. Um, September 24th, we'll be in uh, North Carolina for flag raising. And then we got the feast days coming up. So just. So uh, September 17th is an event here in Portsmouth. September 24th is an event in North Carolina. And then right after that, you have uh, Yom Teruah, which is September 27th. Uh, it's a flag raising for the United Nation of Israel. Uh, I can let you know because I'm supposed to be making a flight, so um, I should have that probably by tomorrow. Um, okay, so um, I'll be letting y'all know about suit code and stuff like that. What where we'll be at? We'll be here for Teruwa, and of course for um um. Yes, yes, yes. So we'll be here for the first two fall Moadim, and then we'll be in uh Carolina for suit code. in uh, Camp Kirkwood. So um, everybody should be getting getting prepared for that. We'll have the list and stuff come out soon um, and let everybody know what the fee will be so we can make sure we get the food and all the stuff early. Um, outside of that, are there any other questions, comments? Everybody good? Everybody clear? Okay. 
Um, so. Uh, what, what land? So, um, Sukkot? Oh, oh, yes, uh, 27 acres in, um, dang, what's the, what's the city called? What's, I forgot what the city called. Um, what you say? Maharan. Um, Maharan. Maharan. H-E-R-I-N. Maharan. Maharan. It's like uh, two hours, about to 20 minutes away. Mm -hmm. But it's um, um, 27, 27 acres, and we, you know, uh, clearing and trying to get it right now. Purchase what? Oh, stop. What? We'll talk about that offline. Yeah. <laughs> okay yeah we'll, we'll we'll talk about that um okay uh so let's um let's stand up and pray out God crazy. i don't know where the east at oh east is that way um yeah i, I got it okay hallelujah yeah okay turn around about father yeah we thank you we honor you and we praise your set apart name for you are L and L alone, and there is none like you. Father, Yah, may you continue to watch over us, protect us from the dangers, the threats that are seen and unseen, Father, Yah. For we know that you are our protector. You are the one that fights for us. So we pray that when we call upon your name, Father, Yah, that you hear us and not turn your face from us, but to remove from us our iniquities, our sins, and our transgressions, all those things that make us dirty and unclean, Father Yah, which means that you will not be dwelling amongst us. So may you remove from us, Father Yah, those things that are impure within our minds, within our hearts, that we may move, Father Yah, according to your Torah. We may speak according to your Torah. That we may resemble our forefathers and our foremothers who were righteous, Those who you say that you may redeem us, Abiyah, from the lands of our captivity and take us back into our land which you swore unto our forefathers. That your, that your earth, that your kingdom will be here on earth as it is in heaven. And that we may manifest, Abiyah, your righteousness and that all the nations may know that you and you alone are El. As we go from here, Father, yeah, we pray for your protection on the highways and byways, and that we may continue to enjoy the set apart day that you have set apart unto yourself. Baruch Atah Yahuwah, Baruch Hashem Yahuwah, Baruch Habab Hashem Yahuwah, Baruch Yu Yah, Baruch the name of Yah, and Baruch He who comes in the name of Yah. And may the adult Yisrael say hallelujah. 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 Amen. Shabbat shalom, Mishpachah. May y'all have a, a great remainder of y'all Shabbat. And, uh, most I will and we'll see y'all soon. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Shalom, Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Okay. <laughs>